I'm Donna Guest, the Lazy Scrapbooker and Creative Memories Advisor. I was honored to be asked by Creative Memories to create the project recipe for the School Days collection. These papers and embellishments are so fun. Let's get started with what you'll need and a quick tutorial. Here are the tools you'll need to complete this project recipe. You'll need your 12 inch trimmer, the new bookshelf border punch, and of course, tape runner. I've got both regular and of course, repositionable. Now you do not need to have these 13 by 13 cutting mats. I always like to do this with two of these on my table attached together. And that helps me to get things centered because I do have the ruler all the way around the edge of each page. Here are the supplies that you'll need in addition to your tools. So this project recipe calls for four sheets of designer paper and one piece of cardstock. So you wanna have two very tonal sheets that match. There are three different paper pairings that I suggested for this project recipe. And then you wanna have two separate pieces of paper that are of course always double-sided and you'll use both sides and they're coordinated with that one. And then of course you're gonna have one sheet of the canary cardstock and then an assortment of these really cute school days embellishments. First, let's take the two matching sheets and we'll put those aside. Those are going to be our base pages once we're ready to build this. And we're going to take our canary cardstock and do this one first. So with our cutting guide, the first thing you'll need to do is cut off. These are cut then punch because we're going to use this bookshelf border punch. But we're going to cut this at three and three quarters. And we're going to do two strips just like this. Those are for our punch. So we're going to set these aside with the punch so we'll remember and then let's take this last piece and we're going to turn it on its side and we're going to cut two small mats pieces c and d and once we've turned it on its side these are going to be three and a half inches these are for smaller photos three by four photos so three and a half inches do two of those and they're already cut perfectly this way because they're four and a half inches so those fit three by four photos then we've got this last piece that measures four and a half this way and measures five this way. We're going to turn it back so that the five inches is going down this way. So we've just turned it back again and we're going to split this one in half at two and one fourth inches here. So if you need to measure in case we didn't get that quite right, mine's pretty spot on. It might be a tad more than four and a half. So I'll just make sure I put it just over the two and one fourth edge. And we're going to cut that in half. And these are pieces E and F. Now with these two large pieces, we're going to do our punch. And so if you've never used one of these, you always want to start it right here at the black line so that your pattern is consistent going all the way across. So we'll put our paper right there at that little black line. Make sure you press it all the way against the back wall and punch. Not putting any fingers back here. So we're going to pull it out. And this is not a really intricate pattern. So there's a low chance of the punch getting hung up, which is great. So we're going to put it back in here and just cover up the design over here that's in blue now. I don't see any blue. And I'm holding it again against this little ledge with my thumb to make sure my pattern doesn't get crooked. And then repeat all the way down, continuously covering up that pattern. And it will make you do five punches before you're done with each one. Now, if there's one little bit kind of like that, you can either pull it off or just snip it off like that. Perfect. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other piece of cardstock. We're done with this punch. We can put that away now. When we attach these, and we're not ready to attach yet, I like to flip them this way so that these books are mirror images of each other. I just like the way that looks. You can do it however you want, but I'm going to flip them like this. So at the end of our first piece of paper we cut, this is what we should have. On these project recipes, it's a great idea to take a photo labeling pencil, if there are a lot of pieces, and label the other side of that. So I could label these. This is piece C. Now, I didn't really have to flip those over, did I? D, because they're the same on both sides. This is E and F, and these are obviously A and B. So I'm going to leave them as they are if I want. This is how I'm going to place them. So I could flip this over if I wanted to and put A and B. Not really necessary because it's pretty obvious what those are but it does help you to have those labels. So now we're gonna pull all these, put them to the side, and we're gonna grab our next sheet of paper. So the second piece of paper, I'm going to recommend either this one or the cute piece of paper that has the lockers on it. And they look like this. This is going to be the two inch border strips that are going to cover 
the middle portion of these punched cardstock pieces. So because of the design, they cut beautifully in two inch segments. The lockers are absolutely perfect. And these rulers are half an inch each. So that will make a perfect two inches there as well. So on this piece of paper, we're going to get two two inch strips of rulers. And then we're going to get pieces I and J, which are photo mats. We're going to be using the other side for that. But those are going to be six and a half by four and a half. So we'll have a tiny bit left over. All right, so I'm going to start it with this red up here at the top. With the rulers, I may be able to match this, actually. So you have the same ruler on both sides. So I think I'm going to be able to pull that off. But first, let's start on the other end and cut this at six and a half inches. Yeah, this is going to work. So I've got six and a half here. These are going to be for my two photo mats. And these are going to be four and a half inches wide each. This is left over. So I'm going to be using this side for the photo mats right here. So I'm going to go ahead and label these I and J. I love using the Creative Memories photo labeling pencil because you can always see it, even if the paper's super busy like this and it does not leave an indention on the other side. It's a very soft pencil. So there's I and J. And now this piece, we're going to use this side of it, is going to be G. And now we need to cut H. So if we're using a locker paper, it really doesn't matter. It's all going to look fine. But these, I think it's going to look best if you let that go all the way across like that. All right. So we're going to cut off two inches so that the red is at the top. You don't have to do it this way, but I think you're going to want to. Now, these are scraps right here as well. And so now, these match perfectly. That is piece G, and this is H. So at the end of our second paper that we're cut, we're going to have these two strips and these two photo mats. We've got them all labeled, so I'll set those aside next. Now time to cut our third and final piece of paper. For this one, again, definitely make sure you're cutting in the right direction, like we had the lockers or the rulers earlier. This time you've got a few different options. And for this horizontal cut, I definitely want it to go this way so that the little words school and rah-rah are showing the right way. So because this is going to be a one and a half inch strip done twice, we're going to need to turn this piece of paper on its side. And I'm going to feed it through this side over here. We're going to do one and a half. That's piece K, if you're following along with the cutting guide. And then piece L is this one right here that's also one and a half. We're going to use this side. So I'm going to come over here and label K and L. And if you don't have the cutting guide, um, don't worry. You can still follow along and put this together with me. But it's just a great resource that you could get as an advisor. So if that interests you, let me know. I'll be glad to give you any information about that. But all advisors have access to all the cutting guides and materials and resources for these project recipes. Now, the next cut we're going to do, we're going to use the reverse side. And this is going to be two more photo mats. And these are going to be for a digital size print, which is four by about five and a half. So we're going to cut the mats at four and a half by six. So we're going to come over here to four and a half, cut all the way down. This right here is extra. You could actually use that for a couple more mats if you need it. And then we're going to cut this in half on its side at six inches. And this fun polka dot aside is what we're going to use. So I'm going to flip it over and write M and N. So at the end of this third piece of paper, this is what we should have right here. Now we're ready for the fun part of assembling our two pages. So you're going to have your two tonal pieces of paper that match here for your background. Now the other side of this is super busy, really cute, doesn't really go with the pictures that I'm doing, so I chose the tonal side and I think that's going to look better for most any of these layouts using the tonal. So the first thing we're going to attach are pieces A and B. And those are two punched pieces and I even wrote on the back A and B, so we have those bookshelves facing into each other. So I'm going to use my repositionable tape to attach those bookshelves. And you're going to want to put this down in the very bottom corner of this piece of paper. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, done. 
Next, we're gonna take our two inch strips. And if you were labeling these, these are pieces G and H. These are either the lockers or the rulers if you're using school days paper. I'm gonna use repositional tape runner because I just know that I'm gonna have to reposition it most likely and move it around, unless I get it right the first time. And you just wanna center this right through here. This looks really cute. I'm glad I decided to make that ruler match on both sides. Love it. The next pieces we're going to take are our five inch by two and a quarter inch pieces of canary cardstock. They are labeled E and F. And we're going to attach these up here, maybe about a half an inch or three quarters inch from the top. Looks good. It doesn't have to be exact, exactly like mine when you're placing it up here. Just see how it looks with your paper. Our next step is to take our two one and a half inch by 12 inch strips. I've got these labeled as K and L. And this is going to be centered on this five inch piece of cardstock and go all the way across. It's important to do these pieces in the proper order because there's so much layering going on here. This lined paper makes it really easy for me to get this straight. I like that. And all the choices that I selected for the background pages will help you do that. Now we've just got our six photo mats and we can do those in any order we like. With C and D, these are going to line up right next to these yellow pieces right here to look like they're connected, but you're gonna go up a little bit towards the top like that. And this page is absolutely perfectly symmetrical, a mirror image of each side. Now we have two sets of photo mats. The larger ones for our four by six photos are labeled I and J, and they're going to go right here. They fit perfectly in there so that this mat going around it is about a quarter inch all the way around. Just perfect. And we'll put this one over here. Again, giving that a nice quarter inch all the way around. And then finally, pieces M and N are our last ones. They are our photo mats for our digital size photo, five and a half by four. If you have four by six, you'll just need to trim a little bit off of it. And they're going to go right here. Just kind of place them. You can either line them up right here. You can put them in a little bit. I'm going to put mine over just a teeny bit. It would look good lined up with this as well, however you choose to do yours. Okay, so it's all put together. Now the fun part of adding our six photos. I did leave this spot or this spot available. If you wanted to put a journaling box in there, you certainly could. Maybe some of the white lined paper that we have or just some white cardstock to journal on. I've selected my photos and I'm placing them with my tape runner onto the photo mats. For this one, I've chosen to use all six photos and I'll put some journaling somewhere else especially with this light colored lined paper. I can journal right on the paper or you could use the write on journal stickers and those are a great way to journal however much you want onto dark paper because of course they're white and they're going to show up. Now I'll use this fun school days embellishment pack and add some embellishments. I'm going to add them here, 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 and here. And I'm definitely going to use some foam squares on this because I love how it gives just a little bit of height and shadow to the embellishments. Okay, all done. I basically have somewhat three clusters of embellishments here, here, and this one up here, which is split in half between the two pages. And I added a tiny bit of journaling right there. This was an easy page to write directly on. So what a fun and easy project recipe. I hope you love creating this one. If you'd like more fast and fun ideas, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.